Now Q4 has started, now is the best time to look to increase your conversion rate for your online business. Whether you are running a Shopify dropshipping store, an e-commerce store on another platform, this applies to everyone. So make sure you stick around for this video. I'm going to be sharing with you five ways you can improve your conversion rate for Q4 this year and beyond as well. These are all things I've personally implemented over the last year or two that have increased conversion rates for my online businesses. So I am speaking from experience here. So definitely stick around, watch this entire video because I'm sure you will find something that will help your business. And if you've got any questions, just leave a comment down below. Now, just before you get started, I wanna give a huge shout out to the video sponsor today, GrowWave. GrowWave is an all-in-one marketing platform for your Shopify store. One of my personal favorite features they have here is a loyalty and reward program for your customers. This is a huge, huge bonus and a great way to attract repeat purchases from your existing customers, especially when marketing costs are rising. We are all experiencing that. So with the rise in these marketing costs, it is very important to focus on your existing customers and get them to purchase from you over and over again. And with this loyalty and reward program, you're giving your customers incentive to share your business or website with their friends and family. Another great feature they have is a wish list. We all build Amazon wish lists each year. Allowing your customers can do this is a great way for them to share these lists with their friends and family again. Integrate clean looking product reviews on your website, which will help you drive more conversions. They also have the ability to allow your customers to log in to your website with their social accounts, such as Facebook and Google. And finally, a shoppable Instagram feed, which is another great way to gain organic sales. There's absolutely no coding needed to integrate this app into your store. They offer a 24 seven live chat support if you ever need any help with this app. The vast majority of brands that integrate GrowWave into their Shopify business see a very good positive return on investment. And a huge thanks to GrowWave. They have allowed me to give my audience a huge six months free of app usage when you use the link in the description to install the app on your Shopify store. That's six entire months free without paying a penny. So click the first link in the description, get yourself GrowWave on your Shopify store and a huge shout out to them and thank you again for sponsoring today's video. So I'm sure a lot of you are already wondering on ways you can increase your conversion rate on your Shopify store or any other e-commerce store you're perhaps running. Now, one of the first things I wanna mention is product reviews. I have slightly touched on this in another video, but Product reviews are incredibly important for convincing new customers or potential new customers to buy from your store for the very first time. This is because it is an opportunity for you to display and showcase your existing customer reviews to these new visitors and essentially use the reviews to convince these people to buy. And like I said, you can see on your screen here, I've said this a million times before, five high quality reviews just on your one product page is much, much better than having 100 terrible quality reviews just imported from AliExpress. And by this, I essentially mean reviews with no text, poorly translated text, and just terrible image quality in general. I see often terrible drop shipping stores. We've all seen them and you'll know exactly what I mean when I say this. They have two, 300 um, you know, reviews that they've just mass imported from AliExpress. They either have, like I said, terribly translated reviews. They either have no text at all. The images are usually terrible and they probably do no good in terms of driving conversions for the new visitors on your website. If anything, they probably deter these people from buying because it looks scammy, it looks spammy, it looks fake, and the products displayed in these imported reviews like I said, when the image quality is bad, it doesn't make your product look good. So I'm sure there's at least one person watching this video that has done this. Just go through, delete all of these reviews and focus on finding five high quality reviews for your product. Because trust me, this is something I have done over the last year or two. I personally did and made this mistake on many of my product pages. Mass imported 50, 100 reviews with no text at all. Just a picture image, thinking that was the most important thing but it really isn't. You don't even need reviews with images. I usually like to have a few. Say if you are importing five reviews, I would say at least two of them to have pictures just to break it up a bit and make it look interesting and engaging. It is always good to show an image of the product, but you can have very engaged, detailed, just text reviews for your products. And that will also really help. Like I said, I've done this and implement this on all of my product pages now. 
and I've seen a massive increase in conversion rate from doing this. Like I said, you must include reviews that share the customer experience with your product, letting these people know how this product has essentially changed their life, benefited them in some way. If it's a product that has solved a problem, then find reviews that explain how this product has solved their problem because trust me, this really will help. You can use GrowWave, the sponsor of this video, to do this. You can use other platforms like Looks as well. It may take some time. It is a very boring and tedious process to add reviews to all of your products and obviously good reviews as well it's a quick process you will just adding any old review but trust me it's going to do you no favors at all so focus on this and the best way to do it is just get an idea of what products sell the most what products get the most clicks and then just start from the top work your way down and do reviews like that and make sure you do it on all of your products because trust me speaking from experience this really will help your business. Now next up is also a optimization on your product page. A variety of things can be done here. I'm personally not a big fan of huge lengthy descriptions. I do see some stores that just ramble on and on. Personally, I'm not a big fan for it. The only time I probably would have a extremely long description if it's a product that needs it, if that makes sense. I mean, some people will drag on about a very simple product and they'll make the description 10 times longer than it should be. And people just don't have the time to read it unless they need to do the reading to understand what the product is. But a lot of products are self-explanatory with GIFs, images, and things like that. So don't be afraid to put GIFs in your description, images in your description. I personally prefer GIFs than videos as well because videos are usually, um, you know, they're coded in from another platform like YouTube. They're a bit slow to load. They might slow down the product page a bit, whereas GIFs I find load very quickly and instantly and they get straight to the point as well and they look great. And more specifically with the images, I personally like to avoid just plain boring white background images. Typically, you see these a lot on Amazon listings and stuff like that. And especially if you're running Google ads, if you've got a lifestyle product image that you are using for your Google shopping ad, you are going to stand out because you'll notice a good 70% plus of your competition on Google just uses images with white backgrounds. So it's a good chance to stand out. And also in your description as well, I often try and avoid white background images as well in there. And with regards to the copy you're going to be using in the description, make the customer understand how they will feel when they have the product. Don't just tell them and list, you know, 20 bullet points of the technical specs of your product. People don't care what kind of battery is in the product and things like that. They want to know how it is going to help them, how it's going to benefit them and how it will make them feel to own this product. You can do this by listing key benefits early on in the description, getting straight to the point quickly. But ultimately here, have high engaging images, GIFs in your product description and try not to drag on for too long. It really, really doesn't help. And one final thing here I've actually not mentioned. If you think it's a good idea to, include the measurements of your product. I know I said about the technical specs like battery type, people really don't care about that. But certain products, people love to know how big they are. So if you're selling to America, always use the unit of measurement in inches. Being from the UK, I used to put everything in centimeters. It wasn't until I had customers emailing me asking me how big something was in inches. Then I just decided to, you know, have both units of measurements in the product description as well. So that is a little tip to take note of there as well. Now, next up is website speed. Again, very important. You can use Shopify's uh, theme editor to give you a speed check score. You can use Google site speed check and there's a lot of other websites you can use. You'll be able to tell in a minute or two if your site speed needs improving. And if you have got a slow website, you are definitely missing out on potential customers because if a website loads too slow people are just going to bounce they're not going to wait for this website to load they'll back out they'll try something else because people just don't have time to wait around anymore now a good starting point to speed up your site is remove any unused apps on your website and again like i said in the sponsor of today's video they allow multiple features in a single app and it won't slow down your website and if, if anything it will allow you to remove multiple other apps and it could even speed up your site you can use image compressors to reduce the file size of the images you're using but ultimately, I would consult with a developer on Fiverr or Upwork, get them to go over your site because paying an expert for something like this is definitely worth doing. But please make sure you're checking these developers reviews first because some people will say they can speed up your site and then they don't actually do it very well. So it's a bit of a process finding the correct people, but I will leave a link to Fiverr down below as well. Just so you guys can have a browse, there are plenty of capable people on there to do it. Like I said, read the reviews, 
probably don't go for the cheapest person on there as well. Trust me, it is worth the investment to get your website speed up to scratch. Now, number four, again, points I've covered in previous videos, but I'm just gonna get straight to the point here. Remove spam entirely from your website. By this, I mean things like sales pop-up alerts. By that, I mean those annoying little boxes you see on websites that appear in the bottom left or right-hand corner. So-and-so has purchased this product from the USA. That might have worked four or five years ago. It doesn't work now. It slows down your website. I know platforms like Google and Facebook don't like that. If they see you doing that, you could risk an account suspension. So just don't use things like that. Other things, you've got spin the wheel pop-up box. Again, they used to work four or five years ago. I used a spin the wheel myself. They did really, really well back in 2018. But now people are used to it. People have seen them before and they probably associate them with dodgy websites. So if you are using an email capture thing, just a simple pop-up will do. Fake scarcity, you know, countdown timers, false stock alerts, you know, oh, there's only one left in stock. Or, you know, you get the alerts that, 100 people are viewing this product page right now or 800 people have this product in their cart right now don't miss out just just stop it people aren't buying that anymore it really really doesn't work and another thing i want to touch on is untidy quantity breaks that don't make sense now don't get me wrong offering bulk discounts when people buy two three four of the same item can increase your conversion rate but only on products that make sense now by this i mean for example if you're selling socks for example you could offer a discount if someone were to purchase five pairs of socks but if you're selling chairs or you know um gaming headsets or computer monitors and you're saying oh buy three and get 10 percent off people aren't going to do it because people don't need three gaming chairs or three computer monitors. It just doesn't work like that. I'm not saying completely get rid of quantity breaks or bulk quantity discounts. Just use them on products that make sense. And I'm, it's a logical thing to do. Just ask yourself, is someone gonna need multiple of this product? If the answer is no, they don't need to be offered a bulk quantity discount. And like I have already said, these are outdated methods. And these are all things as well that could potentially divert the customer's attention away from placing the order. It might divert their attention away from adding to cart, going to checkout and placing that order. Streamline the checkout process. Just make your website simple but professional. Too many pop-ups and things like that to get in people's way is just going to annoy them and will reduce your conversion rate. And number five is back-end improvements. This is improving things like SMS marketing, email marketing. Email marketing is a huge one. For months and months, my email marketing was doing okay. I think it was generating around five to 6% of my total monthly revenue for my stores. But now I've put more effort into campaigns, email flows. It is now sitting at around 12, 13%. And getting those orders through email marketing is increasing your conversion rate because it's generating and getting high quality visitors back to your website to place an order, whether that be existing customers or people you are getting to order from the abandoned cart flow, for example. You're not paying any extra marketing costs to these people because you've already got their email address. You're able to market to them through email. You're not paying another advertising cost to Facebook or Google to send these emails. So making the most of this is very good, but please, please, please don't start sending email campaigns out to your entire email list that are just basically begging these people to order. You have to be very detailed with it. Make sure you're sending relevant content to relevant people. There are plenty of videos on YouTube on how to do this and make the most of email marketing. And I have actually done one myself on my channel recently. So make sure you check that out. And that is a big, big one that I have learned and you know implemented in the last sort of three to four months or so to massively increase my revenue from email marketing overall increasing my conversion rate so that is five things you guys can implement into your business to increase your conversion rate i hope you found this video informative and useful if you are new around here make sure you subscribe if you've got any questions about the video please do leave a comment i try to read and answer as many as possible other than that thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in my next video